what we're going to do is we're going to take this compute.digest and set it to false. And that's going to enable it to say, okay, well, I need this checksum before you can use it on this other site. So how to do that? Um, and really, this is a really useful feature if you haven't used the, the uh, compile settings before. So go into your project, go down to properties, and the compiler. Down here at the bottom has additional compiler arguments. Now, what was your name over here? Randy. Uh, Randy mentioned you know, doing a release build. It's the same thing with, with doing an RSL because you have lots of debug information in there. You want to make sure that it's clean. And so really what you need to do when you're doing it is just put debug, it's equal to false, and that's going to make it into a, a release build. And then we're going to say compile digest is equal to true. And when the, when the compiler runs all its magic, it's going to say, what are these two properties? And make sure we <coughs> compute digest, sorry. Uh, compute, compute, compute digest is equal to true. So we're going to do that, and it's going to remake that SWIC and make it into its own custom uh, you know, RSL. So let's take that and go to my desktop. And let's just break that apart like we did with the other one. And you can do this by having the, the flex builder automatically extract it. Here I'm just going to You can also just rename it to dot zip and it does the same thing. You can just oh, double click on it whatever you call it. So it made our RSL, but what this is going to do, it's going to still have these references as called library.swift and catalog.xml. What we need to do is we can say, okay, well, really, when we're going to upload it to the server, it's not going to be library.swift. We're going to rename it the name of our SWIC, so my RSL.swift. And then we'll just take that from on our desktop for easy reference. So we've got my RSL.swift. That was about the most complex thing we need to do. And then we just need to upload it to the server. So here I've got my server already ready to go. And I just have a folder on my server called RSLs. You should probably zoom out a little bit. Huh? Yeah, it's really hard to make motion sick, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, is that better? Can you see yeah. the back? You don't really need to see this part anyway, so I'm just gonna well this is me connected to a server. I hope you don't do that. Um, now what uh, one thing you're going to need to do is have a cross-domain file. Um, has anyone heard of those? Use those cross-domains? They're really easy. All it is, uh, you know, I have an example of it in my slideshow. I'll it's just saying other sites can talk to me and they can play in my sandbox. Uh, in this one, this cross-domain file is actually nested down further in my directory structure. And you can actually have a cross-domain up top that says, okay, I can allow other you know, cross-domain files down further in my directory chain to say, you can access this part, but if another directory says, well, no one can access this, so it gives you more granular control. So if your project's saying, you know, only this company can access this RSL, but everyone can access this RSL, use that cross-domain policy, you know that that exists. So all we're going to do, we're going to just take, I'm actually going to name that as a switch and upload it. We're going to take both of those and upload those to the server. Work. It's hard working. I can't see anything. All right. So that's just going to upload both of those to my server, and then we're going to go into our Flex Builder and just change that link property that we, we've been looking at the whole time. Just go in your build path, library path, and uh, because it has to match these these checksums. You actually have to make sure that it's either it's in, in that project. So luckily we have that compiled SWIC right in there. But if, if you're taking a SWIC, it has to be the SWIC that that SWIC came from. It, it, because that those RSL, like the, the, those checksums, need to match up. Otherwise you're going to get this frustrating error that says, you know, nothing's loading. It's not even there. So you have to make sure you're pulling from the same SWIC. And so let's change our link type. And we change it to a digest, which means it has that, that checksum on it. And just add in our URL. And 
down here, this policy file, that's just the cross-domain file. So cross-domain.xml. And really that's all we're gonna do. So let's compile, say okay. And hopefully if we don't have the presentation jinx, everything will it's loading in that RSL. It's gonna take you a while because we have that application tag in there. And it's loaded that in. It was able to execute code from a separate domain that I don't even have access to, let's say.